Well, that, that'd be my question. We'll just talk about it. Yeah, jibber jabber. Sounds good. Okay. Uh, what, what episode? Uh, 144? I think so. 143? I thought we said 143 for the last okay. one. Okay, I'll that I'll trust you on that. That sounds right. Hello, Internet. I'm Dan. And I'm Chaz, and this is Wine is Serious Business, episode 144, we believe. So we're back with uh, some more 2010 Oregon Pinots. We did a couple for the last show. And this time we're doing a couple that are actually like producers that we like, or at least I like a lot. Totally. Yeah. No, I like I like them too. These are both yeah, both producers. Oh, co oh, co you're feeling in the past? Yeah, I'd like like I, like my take on them is is like I've kind of had hit and miss experiences, but I think every year consistently they have a few bottles that I'm excited about. They do, and uh, both their wine style and their personality, like as a business and a tasting room, they're one of the friendliest wineries in the valley. Totally, and I have a lot of respect for that. Like they keep themselves accessible, again, both in regard to personality and their wines, um, and, and they produce a wide range of things. So kind of wherever your palate is. Something probably is going to appeal to you. It's very true. And, and their reasonings have been pretty solid lately too, which which makes me you know have a little more love for them. So yeah. yeah. And and uh, to I guess acknowledge this, this one was given to us as a sample. So thanks to the folks from Dupont uh, for for that. Um, we're gonna awesome. Yeah, we'll talk about that a little bit more. But we'll start out with the Elko right away. This is the the 2010 Lamb Valley. Um, it's the blend, right? A lot of the vineyards that they use. Uh, every year you see this at uh, on glass pour lists in Portland quite a bit. And I think I've, I think I've even seen it in other places in the country. Um, they, they definitely get a lot of distribution. I know they've got club members all throughout the country. So mm -hmm. yeah, they've been around for a long time. Yeah. And, uh, but but yeah, so this is it's a typically a blend of uh, some of their single vineyard stuff. Maybe the, the, there's a certain quality level they look for in their single vineyard wines. They charge a significant amount for. So this is sort of a blend of all this other extra stuff, maybe some of their estate fruit as well. But uh, this is in the twenties, like yeah. So low twenties, low to mid twenties. Yeah. yeah, all right. Depending on where you find it, um, their two thousand eight and two thousand nines were was good. Yeah. So yeah, I haven't got to taste this yet though. So <sighs> kind of fruit on the fruity side on on the nose. Like Very. Really lots of strawberry just jumping right out at me. Yeah, right too. Just like really nice fruit. No funkiness or earthiness, just yeah, lots yeah. of like red berries. Which reminds me even some stuff from the two thousand nine, where, where some of the like noses and palates were a lot fruitier. Mm -hmm. Like this, they clearly didn't have any ripeness problems with the fruit that went into this. No, it seems not. Yeah. yeah, but it's it's prettier. It's not like mm -hmm. the two thousand nines were bordering on like a little bit of darkness from like opa ripeness or something or like uh, sweetness. This doesn't have any of that. This is just like uh, young fruit. But I guess yeah, it's good strawberry. That's drinking nicer than their single vineyard bottlings are now. Sure. Man, there's, yeah, this is, I think this is a little, obviously, blended to be drinking, uh, drinking in the near term. Huh. And, and yeah, really nice. I mean, nice on touchdown, sticking right with those red fruit flavors, and, and really not leaving from that at all, right? Like, yeah. maybe a little bit of stemminess to it or something. A little but, bit. But not, not much else. It's just be beautiful red fruit. Yeah, the, the tannins kind of like settle kind of on the, in the center of the palate. Just a touch of firmness, but it's not it's not rough at all. I think it complements the fruit really well. And, and honestly, I'll even say that I'm kind of glad it's there because the fruit is on the sweeter side and is kind of full and friendly that this wine would be almost like too easy or too candified, I think, if it weren't for the tannins giving okay. it a little structure and a little body. And so I kind of like how they work together. The finish is just more of those strawberry flavors and kind of like some strawberry seeds on the palate too. Um, but real friendly, easy to drink. You know, not a lot of complexity, but but totally enjoyable and some good Pinot Noir characteristics, I think, too. And Dan nailed it there. I mean, really, this is just friendly Pinot Noir. Mm -hmm. Very, very easy to drink. Um, a, a, in a style that I think everyone would appreciate, or you you can appreciate. Like you were saying, it's got, the, it's got the easy fruit for the people that just want that, but then it's got this little bit of structure backing that for the people that want a little bit more firmness or, like, more acidity. This has got it, right? It's got some of it there. So, yeah. good stuff. Kind of a kind of a tough one to give a score to uh, for me because uh, like there's nothing like really pushing me into the excitement zone, but it's definitely enjoyable. So, yeah. and, and I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna stick to the fact that I'm really happy with the way the talent ta tannins balance out the fruit flavors here. It's gonna make it 88 for me, just barely. But I think I think that little bit of structure makes it happen. Yeah, I would agree. If I was gonna, if I was a person to give minuses, 
it would be 88 minus 3, but yeah, it just makes 88 for me as well. Um, it's just delicious and easy to drink. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's, there's no flaws here, there's nothing wrong with the wine at all. And the things it does good, it's, it's really friendly. And, and, and it, the things it does good, it does well. So, yeah. they're yeah. really good. So, very nice wine. Yeah. And, and cool because it, for the people that are out of state, you'll see this around. This is one that does make it. So, totally and, and worth definitely picking worth picking up. Yeah, yeah. like as opposed to like other bottles that see huge distribution like that, around this price point, like less, like this is definitely a good option, I think. Agreed. All right, so talk a little bit about this thing. This is uh, the 2010 DuPont Cellars Lonesome Rock Ranch Willamette Valley Pinot Noir 13.4 alcohol. It's a new label for them, right? New label, brand new vineyard. So this is okay. the first wine from this vineyard. Uh, it's not tied into the uh, estate grapes that they usually, that, that they historically work with and they still work with all the time. This is a new vineyard they acquired. Um, Where is it? What what uh, ABA is it in? Uh, it's, it's not oh, in the Dundee Hills. Say, no, I want to say, I want to say it's near or in Yamhill Carlton. Um, we'll take a cut. All right. Well, we're back. Back from the cut. Uh, did some looking up. It's it's uh, Yamhill Carlton. Uh, I believe. It, yeah. If seller if seller tracker is correct. Yeah. So. And uh, it says it says, on the, so, it says on the bottle and then the foothills of the coastal range. But uh, you know we love Isabel's wines. Yeah. We interview right do the interview with her every year. Yeah. Um, and and you know focus on that year's vintage. We haven't done the 2010s yet, but since this is like a new vineyard and kind of outside of the main lineup. Like we decided to do this one separately. So and unfortunately, we don't have any knowledge. Like how how old is the vineyard? Is it brand new vineyard? It is brand new. Yeah. Oh okay. Yeah. So I know I know it's Youngford. I don't. Uh, I used to know all this stuff. Oh. Man, it's gone now though. So I don't know. I don't know. Too much stuff going on. But it's brand new. But it's brand new. So. All right. Man, <sighs> great nose. That yeah. smells wonderful. Nutmeg, minerality, and like a whole bunch of berries just smashed together. Your raspberries, blackberries, maybe a little bit of pomegranate, just all smashed up together. A little bit of pepper, great complexity on the nose. This smells really good. <laughs> this, I think Dan's pretty much uh, wrapped up the nose there. I mean, it's got the nutmeggy thing too. It's got like some sort of like baking spice thing going on there. The, yeah. the red fruit that's just awesome. It smells wonderful. But no, no, no funkiness really. Maybe nope, a little bit of true. maybe a little bit it's of the dried mushroom, yeah. but but not not much. So, mm. smells awesome. Real clean across the palate. Getting some great raspberry notes, kind of in the back corners of my mouth. Really light too. Definitely touch down and, and, and feel on the palate here. It's light. And tannins have a really nice feel to them, right? Like, mm -hmm. Uh, how do you even describe that? It's just like they're like dusty and, and there's no sort of there, there's no edges, no abrasion. There's just it's, huh? That's it's it's delicious. It's Definitely good. some dark fruit showing in the center of the palate too, like the blackberries and maybe in a little of the like currants or something like that uh, showing as well. Um, kind of works in harmony really well with the brighter red fruits that show up later. Yeah. And a lot of a lot of red fruit flavor lasting into the finish too, mm -hmm. and in another style similar to the El Cove, where I don't think anyone's going to kick this one aside, right? Like I, I don't think so. Very I think this, easy to I think this is a really pleasing style to a lot of palates, mm -hmm. more so than the El Cove almost. Whereas there was a little bit of firmness, I thought, to the, the a little bit of you know firmness in the middle of the structure or to the structure. This is like just so easy and well put, to, but it's well put together. And I, it's, and it's definitely got more acidity too. It's got like a sense of liveliness to it that I'm really enjoying uh, on the palate. Man, and, and I think you kind of nailed it too. Like this is a wine that you can pour for, for almost anybody. I, I can't I can't think of, you know, unless they hate Pinot Noir in a very comprehensive sense, I think almost anybody would enjoy drinking this wine. There's a little bit, there's something there for everybody. Yeah. Just about. Price point, this is a little higher. I think this is like like 35 bucks or something like that. I think, I think it's... Really, but, uh, Maybe not, well, maybe, while well, maybe not a QPR winner, I've had a few beers before this, you have to excuse me. While maybe not a QPR winner, um, totally, totally worthy of the price point, yeah. right? Like, yeah. But good, I mean, good, good juice. Good like juice. I said, yeah, nobody's going to be disappointed with the, with this wine. It's, it's delicious. And I, I look forward uh, to getting more for myself, actually. I, yeah. Yeah. Good flavors. Cool stuff. Easy drinking. Yeah. I could see it, I could see it benefiting from age as well. 
You think so? Yeah, it doesn't need it, but I think yeah, there's a good it's, sense of it's balance. It's right now style, like I think. Ah, uh, that's a good point. That's I mean, this point, this but... this is like some other 2010s I've had. Like these are just the ones that are open and ready to go now. Like they are drinking so well now. Why wait? Hmm. Honestly, that's an interesting point. And, and I guess I what yeah. is it going to descend into? I have no idea. Hmm. You know, or or ascend into, but really, hmm. how, this is wonderful. It is. You know. It is. <laughs> So, you know, I'd be curious to see just how it integrates. I'm thinking more on the five-year time frame. Mm. Um, definitely doesn't need it, but I'm, I'm curious. I think, okay. I think it could do well. Uh, okay. So, easy 90 points for me. And in a lot of ways, I think this, this like, nails, in my mind, like, what a 90-point wine is, right? Like, good balance, good flavor, and a little, a little bit of excitement where I'm, like, like a little yeah, bit of complexity. And, yeah, something every time you had that sip, you're just like, yeah. This, that 90 points really, for me, too. Really nice wine. Sorry we're dead on in the show. Yeah. It's like... Good, awesome. Yeah, both both really cool wines, but this, this is, yeah, totally 90 point experience. It's got a little bit of everything. It's awesome. Back to back shows with, with two solid current release Oregon Pinot Noirs. That's what we like to talk about. That's what we like to do. So, so I'm feeling good about this. Uh, Chaz had a good question. Okay. Go uh, on this. Yeah, so we've, we've done two 2010 shows in a row. And uh, 2010 was uh, underhyped, I think. And, the more I'm tasting this vintage, the more I'm really liking it. I think I Dan totally too, agree. right? Like, uh, with all the press and everyone talking, people really talk down. I think on the vintage, and I mean, even even me as well. Reading all the stuff, you get biased, right, against it. And and, I, and maybe it's kind of a good thing. It's like when you go into a movie that someone says wasn't so great, you really enjoyed it. Like, yeah. Maybe sometimes you enjoy it more. But do you guys really like the 2010 vintage? And and what are you drinking that's been your favorite? Like, I mean, that Cameron that we did on the last show was just awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Really good. But the more I'm tasting 2010, I'm just like, these are all really good wines. Like, yeah. Seven of Hearts stuff I've tasted recently has been smoking. It's just like... And a lot of the higher end stuff is yet to come out. I'm excited to try all of it. Yeah, so. same here. So, yeah, let us know because we would like to check them out for the show even or just check them out ourselves. So, see you guys next time. Cheers.